June is Icons Month at IGN, where we're profiling iconic video game industry figures, characters, series, and themes. Today, we're talking with an all-star team from Blizzard, industry veterans who helped bring the acclaimed StarCraft series to life. We discuss the origins of the game, Blizzard's unique production methods, and its lasting impact on the gaming landscape. Hey there, IGN. My name is Michael Swaim, and I am here with Matt Morris, senior game designer at Blizzard. I have the immense honor of sitting down with Sam Didier, senior art director at Blizzard, K.O. Milker, production director for Blizzard, Rob McNaughton, a lead artist over at Blizzard for IGN's Icons Month. Thanks so much for being here, Rob. That's great to be here. Thank you for having me. Hey, Michael. I'm great. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. This is actually kind of fun. Hail, hail. How you guys doing? Good to talk to you. I believe you'll be seeing me as a picture today because I don't have a camera set up. Well, even back then, too, like we, the, the highest technology at the time for consoles was Super Nintendo. And Super Nintendo only allowed you basically 256 colors that you could work with. And so we had to choose the correct colors that we thought worked. You know, we nowadays with Photoshop and then just modern day games, you could use every single color of the rainbow, even all the colors from the big crayon box, everything. Back then, you had four grays and you had to make some of them look like they could blend in with the green because you only had three greens. Mm. And now we could choose those colors, but you only had a set amount. Yeah, I would say a lot of cases we want to push, uh, like, hey, we did this, now let's go even a little further. There, and then we have to sometimes rein that back for whatever reason. But uh, there's a lot of cases where we, hey, let's just try something crazy. And if the if it looks cool and we pitch it to designers like, hey, we can do this and we can make it look awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, then all of a sudden we get really, really cool results that, that people may not have been able to expect. As a result, a lot of times now designers, if they ask for something, they give us a spec like, oh, this should be an air unit that uh, attacks at some distance and has maybe a spell. And and like okay can we make it a bending serpent and then we get the viper and the viper is a very unique character in starcraft 2 that actually has lots of weird i'm going to call it follow worm physics relationship with art has always been amazing for design right because we could come up with some ideas but if it doesn't look good it's just never really going to be able to sell so uh, I, I think that relationship between uh, design and art is really intricate and also importantly with uh, engineers. Design isn't just coming up with ideas. Uh, a lot of ideas come from various departments, artists, engineers, producers, um, even you know we talk to QA or any of these other uh, groups that support the development team. Uh, great ideas come from everywhere, right? It's really designed to kind of figure out what might be a good idea and what might be a bad idea and kind of explore and see how that actually fits within the product. Uh, we knew uh, going into Wings of Liberty and the Heart of the Swarm, we kind of had some big picture ideas. You know, uh, Rainer was a bit of a, a scrappy uh, individual. He's kind of been taking a step back since Brood War, and we're trying to figure out how to retain his glory. Like, what has he been up to? And, and so those first couple missions, you kind of get a sense to him being this like mercenary-like group, and he's got these, you know, loyal, um, you know, individuals following him. A lot of times we come up with some missions and the writers are, the writers are saying, no, we can't do that. Uh, sometimes the writers want to do something and we're like, no, it's not gonna really work for gameplay. So uh, it, it's probably just the process of going back and forth to really kind of iron this out. It's not, we were handed a story and we just drive down it. We look for that feedback. We look for people within the company that are not familiar with an RTS. Uh, we're always looking for people within the company to have those kind of fresh eyes. I basically head up the group of leaders for whatever game I'm working on, and we kind of chart the course of the game. We, we set both our goals and our direction, and then work to build the team and kind of nurture the team culture so that we can execute on those goals and vision. When you look at the credits of a Blizzard game, the first thing it says is, is that it was um, designed by Blizzard Entertainment. And you know, it, this is really, we have a, one of our core values is every voice matters. And this is something that's about the reason that we draw together all these people with these, these talents and abilities and experiences and passions. And it's because it takes a Blizzard to make a Blizzard 
Blizzard game. Uh, and so yeah, that is definitely something that holds very true on all of our games. And even if like I'm working on these games and there's another game being developed, you know, we do alphas and betas and things internally, and those are opportunities for us to give that same input and ideas onto games that we're not even working directly on. So that's a really important value at Blizzard. So most of what I think we continue to see is people trying to go in different directions and seeing what kind of cool things they can do, whether that's co-op or you know going onto mobile and doing games that are more like combination of strategy and like you know, deck building games and all the things that have come from that. So it's kind of what's something cool about this industry is it's really been in its infancy this whole time and we're all still kind of learning and morphing and creating new things and trying to learn from our past as we go.